Hi, how are you doing? It's Rich from Racing Profits and welcome to video four in our Cheltenham Festival guide. And this is a guide to day three. Day three is a bit of a quieter day for us, uh, the Thursday, before all the mayhem of Friday and Gold Cup day. Um, we've only got the two grade one races to focus our attention on today. The first of which is the Ryanair Chase, a fairly new race on the card. And then the World Hurdle uh, itself, which we can look at. Again, what I'm going to do in this video is just go through each of the two races, um, look at the key trends and statistics over the years for the race uh, to help us narrow down the field, and also look at the trials races and races that have led into Cheltenham that can give us some clues to the horses that are in form and most likely to perform well. As I said, there's only been seven running, um, seven, it's only been run seven times, sorry, as the Ryanair chase. Uh, it's a fairly new a new race on the card however there are still some angles to look at and as with a lot of the races at Cheltenham the best starting point is to look for horses that have won at Cheltenham before again it's uh, quite a key stat that um, well Cheltenham is just a horses for courses um, type course with all the undulations and the uphill finish you know you need to, a horse that's proven itself here and certainly all seven winners and the five runners up so far have done so Alberta's um, Alberta's run, who won the Ryanair in 2010, returned to do it again in 2011. Um, so it proved itself over over the trip and actually in this race itself. <coughs> again, a strange statistic so far for this race, unlike um, the week so far, is that there's been no Irish winners of this race. Um, it's all been dominated by the home trainers. <coughs> The market again is a great guide to this race. Six of the seven winners have been in the top three in the betting. So very, very tight. The top three horses have given us six of the seven winners so far of the Ryanair. And again, the race is all about staying and stamina. Now we've said this a lot about Cheltenham because it is a fact that a horse has to be proven over three miles really um, for this race. You know, look for a horse that's proven over three miles. One surprising fact is that the top rated horse in in the race has been be beaten so far. So the handicap, um, if you look at the handicap marks, the top rated horse has been beaten in each of the seven runnings so far. Although all the winners have been rated 158 or more. Horses aged 8 to 10 year olds have won the last four Ryanairs in a row. So again we're looking at the older horses here. Um, probably because of the experience they need to get round and also their proven stamina. So the Ryanair Chase Trials and Previous Race Guide. You can see here Imperial Commander and the Paddy Power Gold Cup um, is one of the real key guides to the Ryanair. Uh, it's held in November at Cheltenham and it's thrown up five of the seven winners so far. You can see here, as I say, Imperial Commander who he won the Paddy Power Gold Cup. He also ran in the King George VI at Kempton. Came on to win the Ryanair and then he's continued to win the Gold Cup as well. The previous Ryanair chase has thrown up three subsequent winners. So if it placed, if a horse placed in the previous Ryanair chase the previous year, so look back in the form guide, then the chances are he'll do well the following year. The December Gold Cup at Cheltenham as well has featured, um, has thrown up a few Ryanair winners. So look at the Grade 3 December Gold Cup and the King George VI chase at Kempton. Um, again, they don't often um, win the King George VI and then go on to the Ryanair. But if they've placed in the King George VI or run well there, then they will often go on um, and do well at the Ryanair as well. A negative is for the Grade 2 Peterborough Chase, which is run at Huntingdon in December. All seven winners have gone on, all seven winners of the Peterborough Chase have gone on to the Ryanair, but only one has even placed in the, um, in the top three. So positives. It ran well in the Paddy Power Gold Cup or the December Gold Cup. It ran in the King George VI at Kempton. It ran in previous years of the Ryanair and was a winner or runner-up. Has proven stamina over three miles to get the trip. And is eight to ten years old. So these are the positives we're looking for. The negatives 
is lack of Cheltenham winning form. Again, if it's a horse that hasn't done well at Cheltenham, then it, you really want to be questioning it. Outside the top three in the betting, again, we've said it's very tight market is this, and usually the top of the market's a very good guide, as it is with a lot of um, races at Cheltenham. Top rated BHA or hand, top rated handicap horse uh, hasn't won yet. And a Peterborough Chase winner. Um, if it won the Peterborough Chase at Huntingdon, then the stats are against it doing well at Ryanair. Again, a BA, BHA rating of less than 158 um, is a major negative, I think. Okay, so that's a Ryanair Chase out of the way. Let's go on to the World Hurdle. The big three mile hurdle race, the big stayers hurdle race. It's been dominated over the last few years by big bucks, won for the last three years, and he's French bred. Um, also, six of the 12 winners have been French bred horses, so that's one of your starting points with the world hurdle. Look for French breds. Again, these stayers and stamina races you'll find French bred horses do well in. The only footnote to that, obviously, is the champion bumper as I said um, yesterday's video French horses for some reason haven't done well in that at all so the last 10 winners have all come from the top 4 in the market again and all 12 winners were in the top 2 in their previous runs out so again we're looking at the top end of the market and we're looking for uh, recent form all 12 winners in the top 2 in their previous run out so the previous race looked to make sure they were either first or second 16 of the last 18 winners ran at the previous year's Cheltenham Festival. So again, we're looking for form here um, from the previous year's festival. No horse since 92 has won the champion hurdle and then gone on to win the world hurdle, which you'd think surprising because you'd think the natural progression for a horse, if it did well at the champion hurdle the previous year, it would step up to the world hurdle. However, it doesn't follow. We haven't had any any horse since 92 uh, actually achieve that. I'm sure it'll happen one year, but at the moment the stats don't support it. It's another race where the Irish have struggled with no wins from 17 attempts. So again, it's um, a strange fact is this, but we get to this day and the Irish really don't do well at all on day three of the of the festival. And no five-year-old has won the world hurdle since 1972 when it was first run. So again, the younger horses um, really don't do well in this race. And no horse has made it all as a front runner and won the race since 96. So again, front runners don't do well here uh, because of the distance of the race. The best races to act as guides um, are obviously the main staying hurdles of the year. So you've got the Cleave Hurdle at Cheltenham. Uh, it's a Grade 2, but that's a three-mile hurdle race, and it's thrown up three of the last five winners. The Long Walk. Again, it's a Grade 1 at Newbury at the end of December, and it's a great guide with five winners over the last ten years coming from the Long Walk. In fact, you can see Big Bucks here, and he actually is the winner of the World Hurdle for 2009, 2010, and 2011. And he also won the Cleave Hurdle and the Long Walk. The previous season's World Hurdle as well as thrown up five winners. So look back over um, the previous season and see what horses are returning. Any horses that were in the top two or three again need to be in your shortlist. However the Champion Hurdle as I say is a negative. You know with so few winners um, of the uh, well, no winners actually of the champion hurdle actually returning to the world hurdle and doing well. Um, it's quite a statistic to say that nothing since 1992 has done that, but it's, um, as I say, it's got to be a major negative. So positives for the world hurdle on day three. That it's running the cleave, the long walk or last season's world hurdle. French bred horses. Top two finish last time out. Top four in the betting. The negatives are its age. Five-year-olds don't do well in this race. Is it Irish trained? Again, they haven't got a good record here, Irish trained horses in the world hurdle. Did it run in the champion hurdle the previous year? Was it outside the first four in the betting? 
Is it a front runner? Again, front runners don't do well. So look back at its form and read some of the, the um, notes from its previous races and see if it's a front runner. So enjoy day three. As I say, just the two races to cut, concentrate on, on this day. So take your time to systematically work through both of them, look through the fields, and then again end up with a shortlist of two or three horses. This is your aim throughout this week, is to get yourself a shortlist and then make your final decisions actually on the day of the races. Um, looking at conditions, which horses you feel suit the conditions, um, and then you can get involved from a betting angle on those top two or three that you've got left. Uh, again, the videos are up on racingprofits.net backslash Cheltenham if you want to have a look at all the videos at once, um, and I'm going to be posting my shortlist each day. So have a great day three, and tomorrow will be the last video in the series when we look at the Friday at day four, and it's Gold Cup Day. So take care and I'll talk to you soon.